Hey gang. 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 Welcome to Horseshoe in Time. Let's talk. That's the whole purpose of having a research center gang and a television show where we can actually research things because throughout history, nobody has ever really researched farrier science. And for the first time, the farriers and the horse owners come together and built a research center wherein that they could investigate products, they could investigate new ways of shoeing to help protect and keep our horses healthy. We so tickled that you're watching the show and hey, Grab a horse on about all and twist him a little bit, bring him in and tell him about our show. Watch us next week on Horseshoe and Time, and right after that, Horseshoe and Time, let's talk. And remember this, gang, a happy horse. He's a happy owner. Hey, gang, I'm Ralph Casey. And I'm Link Casey. You know, 15 years of research here at the Research Center, we've got something. Every horse owner that ever owned a horse or you're going to buy a horse, you definitely need and here's some of the things you're going to learn gang that's important that you should know about the grammar school of shoeing and trimming you're going to learn what causes stumbling overreaching elbow hitting forging or clicking cross firing scapping the most dangerous speed cutting and guess what gang it's going to show everything that your farrier should know or you should know about your horse and here it is it's a dvd free for the asking every horse owner can get this or farrier or anybody out there it's free you can see the number right there on the screen gang and we're encouraging you to get it it's going to be something you're just going to cherish from now on thank you hey gang we're right back at you. now if you're looking at the bob wire and, and you can see that's uh, Sarah and myself there doing a, uh, looking at barbed wire mm -hmm. horses, and you see the grass just on the other side. Right. Well, a lot of times when you don't have any grass in the paddock or wherever you got your horse, a horse will reach over there and they can hang it on barbed wire because they'll paw. Mm -hmm. when, it, when they tend to lean over is when they'll paw. And, and, and get you, that shoe hung on the wire. Right, and if anybody's had a horse, you'll notice when you put feed in a bucket, mm -hmm. they'll stand there and start pawing. Right. And I don't know why, but a lot of times they eat and hey, they don't pay any attention. Right. But when you put them in a feed bucket or reaching over a fence and they'll paw just about every time. And if he hangs it in that fence, he's gonna lose you or he could hurt himself there. Yeah. But the hog wire is the worst. I think because I see that all the time. And you Why is it worse than Bob Arthur? Well, because there's so many, they're little, they're little spots uh -huh. and they're so easy to get their hoof hung in oh, there. Okay. So, okay. But anyway, that's just another way. It ain't always <laughs> the fairest fault. Not always. There you go. <laughs> all kinds of horses we do here. Now we're at the National Fair Research Center now. And of course, we have a farrier school here. And we have one of the schools that teaches all kinds. In other words, we've got gated shoeing here, and that's what they're having today, more of a gated class. And right. of course, they're having a shoeing class too. Right. And this is one of the only schools in the, in the country that does that. Of course, we do that because we have the research center. Mm -hmm. So we teach cutting horses, shoeing, but they have to be advanced shoers to come for those specialty horses, like shoeing barrel horses if you just want to shoe barrel, right. or Arabians, or if you want to specialize in here, some of the guys are going to learn how to shoe Belgian horses here. He's a so, big boy, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a pretty good size boy. And uh, you can see the, foot, the feet are in pretty bad shape here. But, so somebody has just bought this. But a lot of people bring their horse. We don't go out here. They bring them here. Mm -hmm. So they come here from everywhere, different parts of the states. And, and a lot of them bring here, they want special work done on right. a horse or things of that nature. But Well, they anyway, come with corrective work that they need done too, A lot too, of them right? needs corrective work. And probably you can learn more here. Well, there's just no place a person, a farrier, can go to get advanced training except here. Right. Unless he apprentice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys just don't want an apprentice. But I know we got off the subject. <laughs> yeah, And we, we got a little off. So let's move along a little further. And we'll kindly show some things that causes or the shoes, that come the shoes coming off and right. problems the farriers have. Now, one of the things here, uh, Alicia, he is sh trying to get his shoe shaped. And the object, and this is where a lot of people gets 
really a misunderstanding about shoeing because the old saying, a fit in the foot to the shoe, that ain't correct, or fit the shoe to the foot, neither one of those are correct. Right. The object of the shoer is to put the shoe where the foot is supposed to be because mm -hmm. the foot's never growing correct simply because of the conformation of horses. That dictates how the foot's gonna strike the ground. So the farrier's job is to fit the shoe. However, sometimes in doing corrective work, he may have to move the shoe over and do some grinding to keep the shoe from coming off. Right. So a lot of times when a farrier does corrective work, we all fail to tell the horse owner that, hey, we're doing corrective work, we need to replace this shoe in four weeks or mm -hmm. three weeks. Because it can't stay on as long. Right, it's it just not. And mm -hmm. even I did some work on your right. horse and I couldn't get any nails on one side, except one nail. And I, I had, think we were here every week. Yeah, <laughs> and we had to put one clip and had one nail. It was actually only about two or three nails holding uh -huh. the shoe on. So we had to do more on it. Now this horse is being a little unruly and I'm this backing into this. I'm out of move in. <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, I'm gonna show another here. So we're gonna stop a second and I'm gonna show another where the shoe is on and how it's set back a little. Okay. So hold on guys. The, you can see here, uh, Alicia, the shoe, the foot needs to come over. He's left the shoe hanging here on the outside. Over here, he's got too much shoe. So I would, I would really, I think I'd take that and I'll reset that one. 